Holy sweet Santa's tits, it's friggin' cold outside right now a lot. My goodness, my car is reporting minus 21C, but uh, it's not wheelchair, will, will chill? What the frick? Wind chill aware. It's just not wind chill aware today. It's actually minus 36 out when the wind nails you, which really sucks. And I've been sitting out here for about 20 minutes now, just, you know, having a vape and making sure my car is going to start at midnight and stuff. And... There's this friggin' Hyundai Elantra that's like doing laps around the parking lot for some reason. I don't know what the frig's going on, but oh, oh, here they, here they come again. Here they come again. So this car here has passed by about, this is the fifth time I've seen this car do this lap. I don't know what the fuck they're looking for, but they ain't gonna find it. And then they shoot down here, and then they go straight. And we got about 30 seconds before they loop around. Not exactly sure what the heck they were doing. Last time I checked, this wasn't a racetrack, it was a parking lot, but maybe they're teaching somebody how to drive a car in the winter. I don't know. Probably not the best place to do that, but uh, whatevs, whatevs. I'm probably be coming around any second there. But once again, we're short staffed, big times. Another co worker called in sick today, so it's still me and Bruce C from the head office, so that's always fun. Luckily, it's not as busy tonight as it was last night. Everything's still broken, nobody fixed shit yet, so lovely. I guess our uh, Customers realize that uh, best effort service is what it is. Oh, here they come again. Here, here they come again. Here they come again. I don't know what the frig, man. Like, we're doing. We're doing. Like, really, bud? Really? Not a racetrack. If you're doing laps, they have a place for that. I think it's called NASCAR or something. I could be wrong, but just fucking giving her around the parking lot big times. And I'm not sure what the hell. What the hell? So I've been monitoring my house there. I'm all like freaking sketchy about leaving that heater on with me not being there. But I gotta do something like that fucking entranceway there. That, that, that cold air coming in, oh my goodness. That's uh, a little bit uh, too much there for my house to handle right now. I'm so worried I'm gonna go home tonight and hear freaking running water or something. The pipe's gonna explode. Oh, this weather, I'm telling you. Luckily it's gonna warm up there later on in the week a little bit. So uh, hopefully this is the last cold spike we have before summer hits. But chances are that won't happen because February's around the corner for freak's sakes. So, so far the shift's been complete nonsense. Uh, gotten shit with the boss there because apparently, um, I, I don't know if I talked about it yesterday, but uh, having a problem with the benefits site. Apparently I have no benefits right now because I never changed my password. I can't log into the site to change my password. So I contacted my boss and said, listen, what the hell am I supposed to do here? And he's like, well, I just assigned you a temporary password, go in and change it. But I can't log into the friggin' site. There's no directions on how to do it. So it's like, okay, so and if I can't get this straightened out, I don't have benefits anymore. So yeah, that kind of blows. Last time I checked, HR, Human Resources, is supposed to deal with that kind of nonsense. But uh, uh, I found out today that they fired Human Resources and we don't have that anymore. We also don't have a facilities management and a bunch of other things that we had before. Right now, all we have is a couple of monkeys that are serving servicing uh, internet to customers and a couple other monkeys that fix the problems when they arise. So yeah, this company's fucked right now. Bell needs to come in here and uh, reassign some staff members to maintain shit because as it stands, the water upstairs is frozen tits shut because somebody, probably the cleaners, turned off the heater last night in the stairwell and we have to have that heater on because the pipes run up the side of the building in the stairwell. And if that stairwell gets cold, the pipes freeze, and the water stops working. And I just took a big shit in the toilet upstairs and it flushed, but the back bowl didn't reload, so that's fun. That's fun. That's exciting. Oh well. Not my house. <laughs> but uh, at, least it, at least it flushed, eh? Imagine friggin' one of my loaves festering for a month. Oh my goodness. That would reek like no other. Big times! But anyway, yeah, it is what it is. Friggin' my sack. I'm gonna head her back inside and carry on with this horse shit of a shift and then uh, hopefully get out of here at midnight and go home and my house didn't blow up. Alrighty boys, it's friggin' midnight. Let's get the hell out of here and go home. Thank God. Alrighty, I'm home. I made it. House didn't blow up. Bonus. This thing is working really well. This room is actually pretty warm right now. So I turned it down a little bit and uh, it's been in economy mode, which is that mode right there. You do get that by just flicking this stupid switch in. Like now it's not, now it is. So, I think that's what that means, probably. I don't know, Frank. 
lost the manual for it. I bought it a while back when we did that live show in the garage. Like even the floor is warm here, so this is working well. But I talked to Bruce from head office about my problem here. He uh, told me basically like there's different things I can buy, but what I need is this thing that bolts to the bottom of the door and it's got like a vinyl lip that goes down and blocks out the, with the wind. Check Crappy Tire, they're about 10 bucks. So probably gonna have to go to Crappy Tire and pick one of those up and install it. And that might solve my leaky door problem. Next, I just need to worry about my leaky window problem, like this window here. It's like mega venting the heat. Well, not from up here, not from there, but down here. I wonder if we can just maybe grab some caulking or something and just fucking spackle it in there, eh? Just crank the cock to it. Maybe I'll just crank the cock to it and see what happens. Not like these windows are ever gonna open again. Like literally, I'm pretty sure they're never gonna open again. There's like a friggin' painted screw in there. You know, if I end up staying in this house and not moving out of it and selling it, I might replace this window with like, you know, a smaller version like one of these windows. No scampers, I'm not talking about you. But like one of these windows that I can actually open because you know what, in the summer, if I were to open this window, if I had proper screens, if I were to open this window, that window and that window oh my goodness this house would cool rake right the frig down eh like rake right the frig down this window i'd love to replace too this big picture window because it's just a pile of shit that won't open and the bottom was kicked out by a hobo i'm assuming and that's why there's a piece of styrofoam duct taped in there for insulation so that's freaking awesome this door here i've never opened it never checked it it's probably insulated from uh, with all the dirt and dust and like i'm not getting any cold air coming in from this door whatsoever and I was getting some from down like you could literally before <laughs> you could see light coming in from under there and uh, we patched that filled it with insulation that spray and shit and uh, that was good to go and then I just threw the duct tape in the bottom there to stop the, the air from coming in because this door never opens I never use this door like, honestly if it wasn't for wanting to have a second exit like it opens I can totally open this door well not right now I'm not gonna but I can't open this door and use it I just choose not to. It is locked, right? That'd be awesome. Okay, good. Good, good, good. But uh, I could totally use this door if I wanted to. I just choose not to. Burp, gotta poop. Oh my fuck, I needed that shit. But uh, yeah, I forgot work. We're, uh, it was pretty busy there. And I chatted with Bruce about that door thing and that seems logical. You know what, I'm gonna turn this freaking heater off. But uh, we we're chatting and stuff and then he came across an article and we we're chatting about it and stuff. Like they wanna, Canada, apparently a lot of uh, provinces and cities are banning tobogganing because it's unsafe. It's like, holy crap, how much can we hold people's hands nowadays? Does the government think they gotta friggin' do everything to babysit everyone? Like, oh, you can't go sledding because you might hit something and get hurt and then sue the owner of the hill. Well, there's these things called signs that you put up and it says, toboggan at your own risk. And... You know, talk to a lawyer and that should hold up. Like, you want to go sledding? No problem. You want to do jumps? No problem. You wreck your spine? It's your fucking problem, not the city's. Don't go suing the city. Like, what do you expect to happen when you come down a hill at mock chicken speed on a GT snow racer and hit a jump? You got no suspension on that thing. Well, now they got front suspension, but back in the day you had no suspension, so landing kind of sucked. I never got hurt tobogganing as a kid. A lot of my viewers, you're all roughly my age probably, because my demograph shows that everybody... My largest demographic of people my age who watch my shit. So, and I know a lot of you were tobogganing as kids too because what else did you have to do in the winter, you know? We didn't have Nintendos and shit. Well, we did, but that was in the late 90s. But, um, or early 90s, I should say. Uh, but we had to go outside in the winter and play. We went tobogganing, we went sledding, we went GT snow racing. We did stupid shit. We tied our GTs up behind snowmobiles and had them drag down the freaking lake at 80 kilometers an hour. I did that once, it was fun. Um, you know, we did stupid shit. But we never sued the city if we got hurt. We got hurt, we went to the hospital, got patched up, waited the friggin' heel time, and then got her done. You know, back out on the hills, breaking more bones. It's, but nowadays, it's like they, they gotta influence, they gotta like launch these laws, not to protect, to protect the people, but to protect themselves from a potential lawsuit, because everybody's mongry, money hungry, and they will sue over the stupidest fucking things. Like that friggin' waterhead in uh, the States who sued Red Bull because he'd been drinking Red Bull for seven years and never got wings. 
They never grew in. He never get, got them. So he sued because the slogan said he would grow wings. Guess he wanted to be a friggin' angel or maybe a crow. I don't know. You know, just like that stupid twit who bought coffee at, uh, at a, sh a coffee shop. I think it was McDonald's. Spilt it on her lap and sued because she burned herself. Some people are speculating the coffee was too hot to begin with. But honestly, when you buy a coffee, if it doesn't, if it's not an iced coffee, expect that motherfucker to be hot. But you know, maybe that's the problem. People don't have common sense anymore. They need everything done for them. They need written instruction. They need guidance. They need that direction. They need somebody holding their hand all the fucking time. But then there's people like me who do not like to have their hand held, who want to be able to experience nonsense and maybe get into danger and maybe get hurt, you know? So you gotta dick over my experiences because the other waterheads around just can't. That's not right. You can't do that. Frig, the next thing you know, they're gonna have warnings on McDonald's saying may cause diabetes, just in case you get diabetes from your McDicks. Can't turn around and sue them because you ate McDicks for 75 years and you got diabetes. Uh, speaking of McDicks, I'm hoping, and both Bruce and I are hoping to God that this is wrong, but there was a posting tonight on the news about McDicks having a delivery called McDelivery. Basically, you have to put in an order over 25 bucks and it costs you an extra two dollars and McDonald's will deliver your food right to your friggin' door. All I gotta say is, if that's true, I'm buying stocks and insulin. Why? Because the diabetes type two, that's gonna start going up big times. Because let's face it, the only friggin' exercise people get when they go to McDonald's to eat is when they go to McDonald's to eat. You cut that out, now they're just gonna be sitting on their couch and then the exercise they're gonna get is walking to the door, paying the delivery dick, and then walking back to their couch and shoveling the food down their face. You know, I haven't had McDonald's in a while except for that one time over the Christmas holidays when Adrian and I went to McDonald's. I had the uh, two cheeseburgers. No, I had a cheeseburger and that McChicken thing. And I got home that night and I felt devastated. I felt just bleh, you know, not after, after having, not having McDonald's for such a long time and then having it, that was bad mojo. Bad, bad mojo. So here's hoping that's a farce and that's not valid and that's not gonna happen because if that does happen, that's dick, man. McDelivery. Yeah, they're gonna make a lot of money off of it because right now McDonald's is even hurting for funds. They didn't make their uh, same amount as they did last year. They're like, we lost money. No, you just didn't make it, guys. Smarten up. But uh, so now this McDelivery thing definitely will give them more profits. That's uh, a given. Also, um. Off topic here, anybody else have cats who are just completely sexually frustrated with shopping bags? I swear to God, man, every time I come in here, she finds a new shopping bag somewhere and puts it in the kitchen. She looks like an aardvark, the way she's eating. Hey, dude, dude, remember that thing I showed you? Watch, ready, 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 watch, watch. You put your paw in there and you get some more food and then you don't have to eat like an idiot. See, more food. You still chewing? You got a good one in there? You got a good one in there? Got a good one? Got a good one? You like that one? You like that one, eh? Who's the kitten? Who's the little kitten? Who's the little shit rat? Who's the little shit rat? You're a little shit rat. Yeah, you did. And if her mouth wasn't full of food, she probably would have told me off. True story. But we had some awesome news on the, uh, on the bay today, which is like the local news website that a lot of people frequent to uh, get the local news for North Bay. One of the things which is freaking awesome, like beyond awesome, excites me so much my nipples are harder than fucking diamonds right now. We're allowed to have fire pits in our backyards now in urban areas, yeah. Which means I can put a fire pit in my backyard now. Well, I probably wouldn't do it now because there's about 75 feet of snow in the backyard and you know, all that. but. You're not allowed to have like the old, you know, tumbler out of a washer plowed into the ground and that. It has to be one of those like Walmart type fire pits, you know? One of those cast iron jobbies that's enclosed with a screen to keep the ashes in the freaking fire pit rather than all over the place burning down everybody else's house. It's gotta be one of those styles. Which is fine, they sell for about 50 to 100 bucks, but the kind I want is kind of like the one that Pug had if you watched this old video when they were throwing lawnmower decks into it. I can't remember what, the, I think it was like magnesium fire or some fucking thing like that that he called the video, I can't remember. But uh, I kind of want one of those types and uh, you can get them with the screen in the top so it keeps the ash in and the smoke can escape and you got the door in the front that you open and you can feed it the wood or whatever. And uh, then I could totally have campfires in my backyard, that'd be so freaking awesome! Me and Cookie Monster could sit in the backyard and have campfires and, and all that stuff. So. That's a little exciting for the summer. 
Hopefully I get to stay in North Bay, even though apparently this place is a cesspool. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, <laughs> go look up North Bay on Urban Dictionary. You will laugh your tits off at the friggin' description it gives this place. And anybody looking to bang any young girls at the bar? Apparently North Bay, that's where you go, because North Bay's girls are looking to get banged out and have babies so they can not work and be on Becker check. Baby bonus, or mother's allowance, whatever the fuck they call it, you know? So, uh, yeah, right on. North Bay's known for something. Drunk cops and friggin' horny bitches. Love that kind. So, between make deliveries and, uh, that's dicked. Oh yeah, the furnace at work shit the bed big times too. That was fun. Uh, Bruce and I both whole shift wearing our winter jackets in the office because it was that cold uh, We had no water upstairs. I think I mentioned all this in the car already But uh, yeah, it was fucking brutal in there, but not my problem now. I'm home. My house is warm I'm a happy puppy. I'm not a puppy though. He's a puppy. He looks happy. Hey, buddy. You happy? Is that happiness? I fucking can't tell is that happiness or is that just completely ludicrous? What is that? Dude, dude, you need to calm your tits. You need to like right now calm your tits like not last week not tomorrow right freaking oh god he's gone look at him i don't know what he's doing he's doing that running on the spot thing on the side thing again my dog is fucking dickered i don't even know if he's a dog half the time he looks like a fluffy hamster you a hamster is that what you are? Oh shit, he's mad. Oh, I just came upstairs to watch some YouTubes like I do every night when I come upstairs to wind down after a day of work. And figured, you know what, I'm pretty wound down, but uh, I'm probably going to bed. <laughs> that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm probably going to bed. By probably, I mean I'm going to be going to bed. I want to make sure that this friggin' heater's still choochin'. Still choochin'. Still choochin'. She's fucking filthy, though. She's covered in, like, bug carcasses and... Probably puppy poop and kitty poop and all sorts of poop and you'd be surprised this thing was laying down in the living room. Wouldn't be surprised if the dog took a shit on it at one point. Right, Booby? Jesus fuck. But um yeah, so stuff and junk. I just saw it on the fridge, that's why I said it. And uh Pug One was talking about Hackintosh on his new computer on the THC show. He was asking about it, which <laughs> Probably isn't a wise thing to do, because it's not exactly the most legal operation out there, but I don't know if his computer can do it, because of the video card. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I don't know if the latest and greatest friggin' Hackintosh software out there can do it. Like, I downloaded it, the uh, Hackintosh version, and I stoved it onto a virtual drive, or a virtual machine, a VBox, virtual box, whatever. Stove it on one of those and it worked, but on a virtual box, obviously it ran like shit because it's a freaking emulator, right? So, and it worked fine though, but it was just, you know, I don't think I had all my cores working on it and you can only assign like four gigs of RAM and you couldn't really edit on it because it was kind of like, it almost felt like I was in a VPN session kind of thing, you know? Like, like, RDPing into another computer and it's that choppy. So it wouldn't be something you'd want to do. Now, apparently there's these iMovie emulators for PC and I've tried some in the past on my test rig and I fucked that rig up three days till Sunday, like multiple times, uh, trying different ones like virus affecting, oh, gotta recover, slap in the R disk, wait 30 minutes, back to stock, try the other one, wreck the rig again, blow it away, recover it, try it again, wreck the rig again, and then I just said, you know what, this is not going to work out. So if I want iMovie, I'm going to have to shell out the money for a Macintosh. So instead what I did was I shelled out a quarter of that price and got Sony Vegas. You know, and then Sony Vegas is so packed with features and once you get past the intimidating dials and knobs and buttons onto the son of a bitch, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's kind of a joke, you know, and then I had this great deal last year. They, they using Sony Vegas 10, it popped up and said, hey, Christmas pricing, $99 to upgrade to Sony Vegas 12. And this is what it does. And I was so excited because it had video encoding support for my video card for ATI before it was only NVIDIA, only talked to CUDAs, wouldn't talk to friggin' streams. So that was kind of a pain in the arse, but now I can do it. So it'll accept OpenCL as a effects processing source using the video card rather than your processor alone, which really does speed up your editing times a lot, which is nice. Well, your rendering times, I should say. 
and that's what I've been using. But uh, Logie tried numerous times to get Pug One on the Sony Vegas, and he just couldn't. He just, just couldn't. Couldn't wrap his head around it. Like iMovie is about as simple of a video editor as a, a simple a video editor gets. Like it's so basic, but you can do a lot of shit with it. Like you can chroma key with it. I know you can chroma key with Windows Movie Maker, but it crashes 72 times before you save your final project and get the fucker out so you can file it up to YouTube's. You know. Um, there's some other free software like that uh, video pad can chroma key but like video pads actually not that bad a program it's pretty damn good for what it is like it's not really free there's a free trial but you can buy the full version and then I don't know what the hell you get I think you get some extra rendering options or something I don't know I'd have to look into it or the trial's only good for 30 days or some nonsense like that I don't, I don't friggin know but um, yeah all that bullshit so I don't know what my dog just did there that was weird it's like you did this friggin' Jackie Chan stretch. What are you? What are you doing? Go, go do what you're doing, and sh oh, you're gonna beat up the fox, eh? You mad at him? Did he steal your cookies again? Does he have your bacon? Oh shit! I said the b word. Does the fox have your bacon? Does the fox have your bacon? Kill the fox! Kill the fox! Get him! Make him die! Go kill him. Go kill him. Oh, yeah. You're such a killer. You're a nine-pound Pomeranian death machine. Look at her. Just steering clear of the dog because she knows when he gets like this, how he gets. She just goes crazy and she wants to punch him out every friggin' time he gets like this. She just wants to friggin' clock him one. It's funny, though, because I have him on camera. And uh, I remember on the older video where Oreo grabbed her by the back leg and just dragged her across the floor. Well, apparently... That's not the only time that happens. I have some footage upstairs. Uh, I gotta go through it all, but it's not gonna be in this video. And it's them at night while I'm sleeping, and Oreo starts playing with his fox or his ball or his frisbee or any one of his toys. And you know how he gets? He gets hyperactive. He goes crazy. He just starts rolling around like a little idiot, banging his toy around, all having fun. And Scampers just finally has enough of it, and she just goes over and she just like lifts her paw. And he looks at her, and she just whoop, boom, and smashes him across the face. And then, of course, he gets up, and he gets all playful, and then she doesn't want any. Like, right now, look at this. Look at this. She, <laughs> she, she's already sick and tired of his shit. Like, she's already, she's already punching him. She's like, listen, dog, I've had enough of you. But then it'll turn into an all-out brawl with these two, which is about to start right now. It's about to start right now. But... <laughs> Or, or not, because Oreo saw me recording and wanted to come over and say hi to the camera before he goes back and body checks her. But look at him. Like he, the, and then a fight will start, and then Oreo will drag her around by her paws, which is really mean. But she keeps coming back for more, and I checked her legs and stuff, and there's like nothing missing, so I don't think he's like really chowing down on her. He's just playing really freaking rough for a Pomeranian. Oh my goodness. But anyway, people, I'm going to shut her down here, go to bed, wake up early. I want to film some cock tomorrow. <laughs> that sounded awesome, eh? But I want to film some commenting on comments. i got a bunch of comments ready to rock, and I want to get those done. I'm going to start editing these up tonight and get them probably deployed before I go to bed, and then uh, go from there. So on that note, I'm shutting her down. Thanks big times for watching my video. I really appreciate that, gang. Uh, like the video if you want to, leave a comment if you want to be on commenting on comments, especially if the comment's in the form of a question, and if you're not going to be a complete, well, even if you're going to be a complete goof, I'll probably still answer it, but I'll make fun of you too, so that's alright. And, uh, yeah, stuff and junk, because it says so on the fridge right there, stuff and junk. So, uh, until next time, people, keep on vlogging.